Right. So, guys, this is an optional video. You don't need to watch it. It's beyond the scope of the, of the course. Uh, I want to actually prove what we've done in the last uh, uh, lesson. What do I want to prove is that if I have an augmented matrix, that means I've got a matrix that I want to find its inverse. Okay? I want to find a to the power minus 1, or the inverse of a. What I'm doing, I'm augmenting it with an identity matrix like that. And then I'm doing a row operation, okay? adding rows, subtracting rows, timing them by a certain scalar. If I do all that, and in that process, many times, many times, it doesn't take just once. You saw it took a while. And in that process, if I con the A, the matrix A became the identity matrix, what the matrix I'm going to get here, the identity matrix became some kind of matrix B. If that happened, then this matrix B is in fact the inverse matrix of A. Okay? How does that work? How does this magic work? So first thing I need to show you is when we're just going to work two by two matrix just to make it easy. Let's turn this matrix, let's do a row operation. And the row operation that I want to do is, get my different color, I'll, I'll keep the same row one as, as it is, okay? And instead of row two, I'm going to do row one plus row two. So we'll keep the same row, uh, so row, row one. I'm not even augmenting this matrix, it's normal matrix, okay? And instead of row two, I'm going to write row one with plus row two. So in other words, one plus three is four, two plus uh, four is six. Okay? Now, what I'm going to try and prove to you now, that I can achieve this, I can go from here to here by multiplying my matrix by another matrix. In other words, every row operation is a mathematically equivalent uh, it's equivalent to multiplying our matrix by another matrix. It's amazing stuff. Okay, let's have a look at that. So what I'm claiming is that 1, 2, 3, 4, my original matrix can become 1, 2, 4, 6 if I multiply that matrix by something. And I want you just, if you want to just pause for a second and think, what, what was that matrix actually going to be? What is this matrix going to be? Okay, can you think about what is this matrix going to be? Okay, so the answer is 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, now I'll try and explain why, why did I get, let's just see first of all if I guess right, okay? So row times column, okay? So 1 time 1 is 1, okay? 1 time 2 is 2. And you see what's happening with that zero, okay? It's always timed by this. It makes sure that only the one counts, okay? So that doesn't change that first row. Then one time one plus three time one is four. One time two plus one time four is six, okay? Maybe something is starting to click. The fact that I've got one zero, which is really the first row of the identity matrix, okay? I've got like the first row of the identity matrix ensures that the second row, the first row is simply the same first row that here. That one zero means I'm going to get the same thing here. Okay? But because I've got one and one, what that means, this, this, this row tells you, look, I want to add one element of row one and one element of row two. One element of row one and one element of row two. So what I try to convince you here, it's not proof, but I try and convince you that any kind of row operation, okay, I just showed you one example, but any kind of row operation can be can be achieved by multiplying the original matrix by another matrix with the same dimension. Okay? Now, how does that help me? This is what I want to prove. This is this is the thing I want to prove. I want to prove this if I'm doing row operation for this combined augmented matrix and this becomes I, identity matrix, then the I become B. Okay, so what I'm going to say is, let's write that down. A, I, oops, not A, A line I. Now, I want this to become A minus 1. This part needs to become A minus 1, okay? Through the row operation, okay? So I'm doing row operations, okay? Row operations. Now, 
And, and this one, I don't know what it's going to become. Okay. Now, how is this going to become that? Okay. How am I going to do it? Well, I can do it. Okay. By multiplying it by a certain matrix. I need to multiply the same matrix. Okay. So I'm going to write that down. Okay. Okay. That by raw operation eventually will become the identity matrix. Now we I just showed you here that raw operation, many raw operation, or let's say each raw operation can be equivalent to one matrix. Well, I didn't tell you, maybe I should have told you that, that I can then multiply it by another matrix and another matrix. Every raw operation is equivalent to a matrix, multiplying by a matrix. So if I'm doing lots of raw operation, I multiply again, again, again by matrix. But if I multiply again, again, and again, and again, and again, and again by matrix, this is in itself equivalent to again a two by two matrix. So all the raw operations that I use during the process can, is equivalent to one, just one two by two uh, matrix. Okay. So all that raw operation that turned this A into I is basically equivalent to just one matrix. Now, which matrix, when I multiply it by A, will give you the identity matrix? There's only one matrix. Just a second, I better just... Um... Okay, so there's only one matrix, really, that I can multiply by multiplying by A will give you the inverse, and that's the inverse matrix. Okay, now, at this point, I still don't know what this matrix is. But by multiplying, if I'm multiplying, if I operated on A by A minus 1, if I multiply A by A minus 1, I must, also, must have also multiplied the second part of this awkward ma argument matrix by I. So now, what is I A minus 1 times I? Well, multiplying any matrix by the identity matrix is simply A minus 1. In other words, this B is the inverse matrix of A, which is where the magic comes from. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed. See you guys next lesson.